This is Jemai Hargens with the Asante Micro Farm and Crop Swap LA, and you are watching The Urban Gardener. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Urban Gardener. I want to thank you all so much for joining with me here today. And if you haven't already, please get down below there, hit that subscribe button. You gotta follow along with more of our garden adventures here on the Urban Gardener. In fact, hit that bell notification so you can be notified of upcoming episodes just like this one here. We're in Los Angeles. We've got another feature for you here on the Urban Gardener. We're down visiting with Jemiah Hargens of Crop Swap LA. He's got this really cool front yard urban garden project here. I just had to come out and see what he's got growing on here. They've got a really cool kind of watering system that they've got set up for this too, which we'll talk about. But uh, let's get over there and check out and see what they've got going. Talk with some of his volunteers, and sit down with him and ask him a few questions about this really great urban garden project. micro farm this is a front yard uh, here in Lamert Park that we've renovated and retrofitted to have what we believe is the world's first water recycling front yard micro farm that means that rainwater that falls onto it is captured that means that the city water that's attached to it is reused hundreds and hundreds of times again to grow food that's here for the neighborhood distribution What's really unique about the gardening methods that we use here is that we use what we call garden socks. These are uh, polypropylene recycled plastic that both aerates and drains the soil in a natural way, allowing the soils and the plants to extract the moisture that they needed at the time and release the rest of it to be recaptured in the water recycling reservoir. As you see in this example, we have some old plants we'd already harvested here. All we do is pull out the old roots. We try to keep as much of the soil in there as possible. We pull out the old roots and we'll add more <laughs> compost and soil uh, here over time that then keep it plump and healthy for the next plant to be added. Uh, we also do our best to aerate the soils whenever we do this. So a little bit of a squish and a roll. And if you look underneath you see the roots have gone all the way through. So all of this is being used for the benefit. In fact, here's a, an earthworm. So even though there's a fair amount of recycled plastics involved, we can still keep health and natural life. Hey guys. <laughs> and you know, it's very alive what we have happening here. We're standing on pond liner and what we've done is we carve the earth and then fit the pond liner onto that in a way that would allow water to drain underneath it efficiently. Uh, under each soil sock is basically a half pipe that we cut. What that does is it allows channels of water to flow continually and less water gets built up underneath these. And then the soil socks on top here allow for, for the plant to to, to live on top. Um, the pond liner uh, is all food safe. It's all, you know, there's no off gassing or anything that creates toxicity. Um, and in order to even preserve the quality of the food themselves, we do spray an organic neem oil from the neem tree seeds uh, in West Africa. And that helps us avoid aphids, uh, other little flies, and any other kinds of challenges.
South Central. I was born and raised in South Central. Went to Crenshaw High School right up the street. Uh, food justice was always um, a concern and issue that we would constantly talk about. And just to fast forward 20 years later and be involved, inspired all over again, kind of reaching, uh, going back home in a sense of what was my original passion. Um, it's just beautiful to just come back to the same community, uh, different organization, same purpose of, uh, of just community, building community through harvesting, growing, and um, A couple months ago, I was working a regular desk job for my grandfather. Uh, I just graduated from junior college, and uh, Jemiah wanted to do a similar project on that land. You know, uh, things didn't work out. They couldn't figure out the numbers or whatever, but I saw it as an amazing opportunity, and I thought it was a great idea. So whenever Jemiah got, the, uh, got this land to start Asante, you know, I was all in from day one, and uh, I've been here ever since. Actually, they seem like this is the future of the world. Yeah. It has to be. And me and my best friends were kind of doing research on urban gardening in Los Angeles. And we saw the LA Times article that I think a lot of people saw and got inspired by. And we actually screenshotted in the video the Olympic Drive, the street signs. And the next day we showed up here and it was lucky, luckily enough uh, Sunday when they harvest. So we got to watch the process and we were allowed to come the next week. And I've just been coming ever since. And it's been an awesome experience. It's kind of been a family here. Every day there's new volunteers and it just keeps kind of growing. It's cool to see people be inspired. All right, Jemiah, thank you for having us out here to your wonderful micro farm project here you've got going on in LA. I've been following you for quite a while now and I've been really interested in some of the things you've been doing but when you started developing this I was like I've got to get down here and see this project and a lot has to do with the way that you set this up. This is just a really really great urban micro farm project. Thanks Thank for you. having us again. Of course it's a pleasure and welcome everybody. I hope, yeah. hope you can enjoy something that you learned from today. <laughs> and so again you've got this really great watering system all set up here for this garden and I'm just really fascinated by it. How in the world did you even come up with that idea? <laughs> well it was late one night and I had a uh, whiteboard with me. I was looking at this front yard as a general front yard to have a basic garden on but I noticed because it's on a hill, we had the option of perhaps lining it with pond liner and irrigating and draining it back down into reservoirs. So I called one of my mentors over at Enviroscape LA and he and his team helped me finish designing and actually installing what this is and training our team along the way so we now know how to do the complicated irrigation systems. And you know, the highlights are, you know, it's on a pond liner so when we irrigate overhead, uh, we've carved the, the land to drain downward into two big reservoirs mm -hmm. that each uh, hold about 300 gallons of water. Um, we put what you call eco rain boxes into them uh, and then close that off with irrigation to uh, allow water to come back in and pump back outward. So that's on a timer. Um, and we so grow, when you turn yeah. that on, when you uh, turn the timer on, it's taking the water from the bottom of the system yep. and bringing it back to the top. Exactly. So it continually aerates, number one. Yeah. And because it's already come through many times and it's soil rich now, uh, it's a nutrient rich water. And wow. so what that creates is a very kind of unexpected effect. Foliar yeah. feeding. Foliar feeding. This is just, <laughs> and that was just kind of one of those happy miracles in the middle of the project. Exactly, right? yeah, yeah. Because we sat back and thought, why are the lettuce growing so fast, you know? <laughs> and it was because the nutrient dense water is going into their leaves as much as it is their roots. Yeah. Um, so they'll grow twice as fast. 
and their roots are going in soil socks. So we go with garden socks. We roll this out and cut the garden socks, fill it with soil and compost, mm -hmm. zip tie the ends, and plug plants in the top. Yes. Um, so the soil socks have an aeration effect, uh, they have a drainage effect, and because they're black, they have a heating effect on the roots to again grow it much faster than traditional growing. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. And really, and if you do, and you've seen some of the great produce that's coming out of this, really great farm. The, the shard is amazingly colorful. The eggplants and tomatoes, I mean, for a lot of us out there, are blooming and, you know, got fruits on them. I actually ate some of the tomatoes just a little bit earlier, and they're amazingly tasty, too. <laughs> really good. So yeah. you've got a great setup here. Thank you. So along, let's talk a little bit about the kind of mission of your, um, was it Prop Swap? Then? Yes, Prop Swap LA. Yep. And you know what our goal is, is to grow food on unused spaces. Mm -hmm. um, because in Los Angeles, there's plenty of types of unused spaces. There are parkways, there are city properties, but those are really difficult to number one, treat to be ready to grow in yeah. and to get approval from the city to have something permanent. Um, the challenge in urban gardening in general is a lot of times conditions change, whether that is a new land ownership arrangement or, you know, uh, employment or economics transitions mm -hmm. um, and in our case even demand on what we're doing has increased significantly both through COVID and local supermarket closings uh, yeah. so what we wanted to do was find a model that we could have consistently irrespective of those changes and that's why a private arrangement with a homeowner that has yard space is really a good answer uh, we can hire our part-time staff here have reliable inputs on not only the materials and equipment, but also the, the staffing and labor, uh, and then have reliable output by selling that food to local members who are families that already live here. Um, it doesn't have to be you know, a restaurant, it doesn't have to be a business or a farmer's market. Uh, these folks who, have, who live in the homes, they definitely eat every week, and yeah. by having that consistent revenue, we're able to maintain this. Excellent. So yeah, this is a farm. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is a farm, isn't <laughs> we it? Compost on right side. here in the front yard of this great house, oh, right yeah. here on this really awesome corner with a great view. It's a farm, <laughs> right in the middle of the city. So you're growing and selling product right out of this yard. That's right, yep. We're growing and selling it right out of the yard. And uh, thankfully we didn't have to treat the yard or anything like that in the first time because the soil socks are brought in soil that we can uh, enrich along the way and in a couple years we'll transition that entirely out with new soil socks. Um, it's just a continual process in and out. Uh, so it's predictable, it's hyper local. We only allow people within two miles to be part of our membership so that our deliveries are simple and it's hyper local. Excellent, yeah. excellent. That is really cool. I really, really love this project again. It's really great. Uh, where do you see the future of this project going? I'm sure you've got a vision here. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I'd love to see dozens and maybe hundreds of these across the city. I think the point would be to make it an infrastructure so the city doesn't revert on this progress. So yeah. that there are so many out there that not only are city leaders and policymakers uh, pressured to encourage this to happen as opposed to being the leaders themselves. Yeah. Um, the way that I view leadership and power is that those who've been in charge and those who have the money or the power or the position have been there long enough to have made this, this transition before, but they haven't. Yeah. Uh, so, so you know, true. we as the people have to kind of make as many of these as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, my vision is 400 within 15 years, yes. and that'll be when my daughter's 18 and she can decide what to do with it all. <laughs> <laughs> be all ready to hand on down, right? Yeah, exactly. That, that long-term three-generational perspective is is frankly, um, you know, for those who've gotten us into this predicament, they think three or four generations ahead too. Yes. And they plan to keep things this way for that long. And so we, on the other side of the fence, have to say, okay, we're gonna create an infrastructure, a system, you know, wrap the company up into a trust, you know, these kinds of, you know, things. We're an LLC and not a nonprofit so that we can continue to make those decisions independently and not be dependent on any kind of funding or organization. Excellent, man. Yeah. It's so great. It's really awesome. I hope that all of you have really enjoyed all of this uh, really great micro farm right here in Los Angeles. And again, Jemaya, thank you so much for joining with us here today. It's I really, a really appreciate it. It's really a pleasure. Yeah, thank you for <laughs> inviting me. And uh, thank you everybody out there for supporting the mission, uh, not only of the Urban Gardener, but of Crop Swap LA and its, its micro farms. Uh, we think we can change the world not only by inspiring people, but again by building the infrastructure that cannot be reversed. Excellent, excellent. And all of Jemaya's information right down there for Crop Swap LA, the Asante Micro Farm right here. I hope that all of you have really enjoyed this video today. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up, hit that like button.
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything at all, get down in that comment section below. I'd love to hear from all of you. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button, follow along with more garden adventures here on The Urban Gardener, and I'll see you all on the next episode. Awesome. <laughs> You're very You're good. So great. Very good interview, by the way. Was that good? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I'm, you know, that's the thing. I got into this because I wanted to tell stories like yours. Butter lettuce. I don't know what that is. It looks like dark magic. Yeah. 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 Um, so I appreciate everybody stepping in and helping out in all the various ways. <laughs> Even the youngsters doing their, their best, helped me harvest some rosemary and oranges today. And, you know, the other youngster doing all his love. <laughs> um, it just looks great. I mean, it looks beautiful. The plants are beautiful, what you've done. You replanted them. Um, you know, added compost and aerated the socks. You know, we watered it and we cleaned up and swept. We, we've made it look really nice. We're getting honks from people as they go by. Uh, it's just really the best thing I know, um, so it's great to be part of this. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you.